Welcome into First Take. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Molly Karam here. Stephen A. Max will join us in just a moment. But here's what we got for you on today's show. John Gruden calls last night's Steelers-Bengals game disgusting. Find out how these guys would describe the Monday night clash. And speaking of dirty hits, Gronk gets a one-game suspension for his on Sunday. Was he punished enough? And KD getting in with Boogie Cousins. Should Steve Kerr be worried about his chippy warrior? Stephen A. Max on the road. Gentlemen, what's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing? I'm lovely. Let's Good do morning, this. Stephen A. You know, what's up? What's up? What's up? <coughs> All right. Let's get into <laughs> it, guys. Stephen A. We know and love. Look at that guy playing hurt. I know. We appreciate no. it. LeVar Ball is done with UCLA, and so is his sons, gentlemen. LiAngelo and two of his teammates were suspended indefinitely by the university after being caught shoplifting in China last month. And now LeVar is telling our Jeff Goodman that LiAngelo is, quote, out of there. And they're exploring other options, too. According to Yahoo Sports, LiAngelo and his younger brother, LaMelo, who's 16 years old, have started looking at international play. China already said, okay, he made a bad mistake. We're going to drop the charges. That's the punishment they gave him. Now we over here. Look, at we got to serve some more punishment? What is the long process for? We only went to UCLA, one and done, to play basketball. I ain't got no fallback plan, because if I got a fallback plan, that means I'm going 80% this way and 20% to my fallback. I'm 100 in, so I never get stopped. <laughs> No plan B for LeVar. That was him just moments ago on the Today Show. Stephen A., do you have a problem with him pulling LiAngelo out of school under these circumstances? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I don't like it at all. I think it sends an incredibly bad message. I think it's real unfortunate that he's going this route, and I think that um, he's not treating it with the seriousness that it deserves. Uh, this is a highly intelligent young man, according to his dad. Uh, he's a 4.0 student, uh, straight A's. Um, obviously, he's highly intelligent. Made a stupid mistake. You can call it a mistake, or you can talk. You can call it thuggish, because when you go to another country and you're trying to steal, uh, that certainly isn't uh, the, the ideal level of behavior that you should be exercising. But he is a kid, and we understand these things happen. Uh, he was lucky and fortunate enough that the international incident that it became didn't lend itself towards them uh, spending years or, or months or whatever the case may be in a, in a China prison. That didn't, that didn't uh, end up being the case. But you come back to the States, you're at UCLA, you cause an international incident. It's a national embarrassment at the very, very least. And as a result, UCLA, the brand that you represent because you were a part of their institution, decides to exercise and exact the level of punishment that they would, they would deem apropos. Now, the word indefinite leaves a lot of wiggle room for them to, you know, essentially punish you for an extended period of time. But in the end, what it comes down to is that they probably were going to suspend the guys until after the Christmas holidays, and then they will come back in January. The father getting involved to the degree that he is sends the wrong message because you're not treating the seriousness of your son's transgression the way most parents would deem you should. Not to mention the fact that you're really, really talking about him in terms of what, you know, his future aspirations may be. You talked to I've spoken to NBA scouts about this kid. They don't they're not that high on him. There's no way in hell he's getting drafted in June. And you're talking about putting him in the developmental league one minute. You're talking about him playing overseas the next. And all of this is because your son was was suspended with what may amount to a couple of months. It's absolutely ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think that LeVar Ball looks very good here at all out of UCLA and by the way taking his son out his son's 18 years old his son could take himself out you know it's really actually not l legally speaking the father's decision but we know that they operate as a unit and LeVar is in charge and I have no problem with it you know why I'm not trying to raise LeVar Ball's kids I don't presume to know any better by the way LeVar Ball has three kids I have three kids if the worst thing that ever happens to any one of my kids is they get caught shoplifting one time I will consider myself lucky I think most parents with three kids would sign up for that. Hey, here's the worst thing that's going to happen with all your three children. You know, by the time they're 18 years old, one time. Like, now, it was in China. It became an international incident, etc. But the actual crime itself, it's not that big a deal. The circumstance made it a big deal, which meant, which means that really where he's being punished for a lack of awareness. But then, on the other hand, we all acknowledge he's still kind of a kid. He's 18 years old. So what are people really mad about? That he won't serve the suspension? Like Stephen A., when you say sending a bad message, to whom is he sending this message? LeVar Ball's not responsible for sending this message to, like, 
kids watching Leangelo. He's responsible for Leangelo. Is he sending the wrong message to Leangelo? Hey, you can get away with it. Again, do you consider shoplifting something that should take, especially if you think the kid will never make the NBA, which is the consensus, even LeVar has been on record saying, eh, I don't know if the NBA is in Leangelo's future. In that case, right now, this level is the highest level he'll ever, he'll ever play at. So an indefinite suspension, if it's for the rest of this season or even beyond, these are the glory years for Leangelo in terms of basketball. And if he's being kept off the court for an infraction like shoplifting, yeah, I understand you want to take him out of there. Then there are those who say, hey, even if he's not playing basketball, UCLA is a great institution. He should stay there and go to school. I would do that if it was my kid. If it was my kid, I'd say, hey, you're in a great place. Let's keep you UCLA. I would strongly suggest that that's the decision the child makes. Level of institution that UCLA is, is as an undergraduate program very highly. But Max, we're having some technical difficulties. I think we just lost you. We we're just hearing your voice for a moment. Stephen. Stephen A., you still well, there with me? Here's one thing I wanted, to ask, right I wanted to ask you quickly, though. As far as basketball, what do you think this means? Is this a smart decision? Like, we heard that he might not go to the league, now play internationally, and his younger son. Is that the right move well, to give him a shot? Well, uh, first, first, first of all, from a basketball perspective, it's not a smart decision because the, the father has ingratiated himself to such a degree that it's going to serve as an impediment for anybody that's looking at his son. you got to remember, even though his son averaged about 33.8 points per game as a high school student, the, as a high school basketball player, remember... Uh, that he's considered a volume shooter. Uh, he's certainly not considered on the level of Lonzo. Uh, there are no NBA scouts or NBA teams clamoring for him to enter the draft where he'll be picked up in a, or drafted in the first couple of rounds. That's not what you're hearing about this kid. And mm -hmm. so now you start taking the risk to the reward. And you take that into the equation. If I got to deal with daddy talking, remember the other day he's just on the record talking about how Brandon Ingram should have passed his son the ball. Talking about how Luke Walton should coach his team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Listen, the fact of the matter is when you open your mouth to that degree, there are teams that may not want to deal with that headache. And they're certainly going to ask themselves, is this player that we're getting worth the headache that comes along with him in the form of his daddy. That's what this comes down to. You're talking to an individual that is, uh, you know, I respect LeVar Ball and the job that he has done as a dad. Um, that's something that I've been on the record uh, talking about on many, many occasions. I think that people have gone a bit too far and have been too excessive in excoriating this man as a man and as a father because he does things a bit differently. And, and certainly I came to his defense with that because I didn't think the excessiveness was necessary. But in this particular incident, just talking about this, yanking your son out of school, because he may not get to play before Christmas. It's ridiculous. The fact is he could have ended up being back by the new year, which is which is a month away, which is less than a month away. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at it from that perspective, this guy can get on the court, and if he is what LeVar thinks he is, he can flat out ball for UCLA. He'll be in the spotlight, and he'll get the recognition that his talents will deserve, and you could go from there. But by doing this, you distract everybody from his game, and get every focus, everyone focused on the idea of having to deal with you as his dad. And that's a headache that a lot of people are not going to want. And it's certainly a headache that a kid should not be subjected to. Yeah, he has the power to make his own decision. But chances are he's going to flow with his dad because that's the kind of imposing figure he is on his children, it appears. And it's going to mm -hmm. be very, very difficult for them to make a call that he disagrees with at this point in their lives. Yeah, and let's not forget, he could also graduate from an excellent institution there. So I find it interesting. Seems to be acting a little more like an agent than a father in this instant. Let's take a quick break, though. We'll try to get Max back, and we'll have plenty more on LeVar a little later in the show. But when we come back, why was Antonio Brown throwing out the word karma during last night's rivalry game with the Bengals? We'll explain and determine if the league has a much larger problem at hand. And Gronk is banned.